extraterrestrial. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's an asteroid, but then once it enters the atmosphere, it becomes a meteor. But it's something extra. Extra means added on terras, earth, and then trio from this trio, astro, the uh, what you call it, astrological plane. So that being said, something that just added on to the earth from outside the earth. So a meteorite can be an extraterrestrial, and technically they are because they can change genes. Like a lot of people think germs are bad, but a germ is just like that's like me saying a bottle is bad because it contains water. A germ is just a substance which contains genes. So you know, it, even when we used to clean in ancient times, we didn't kill the germ because we can't get new introdu- information introduced to us genetically. So if an extraterrestrial was to walk in here and sneeze, you know what I'm trying to say? If we come in here with bleach and we're killing 99.9% of germs, you're killing potential extra information genetically. And I'm not saying every germ is good, but every germ ain't bad either. You know what I'm trying to say? So when we're talking about you know human development physiologically, you can't just be killing potential advancement. But coming back to my initial point, yeah, it's, it's uh, Levels of existence, I would like to say biologically, where you can compose certain amounts of intelligence and interact with somebody else. And you know, a, a prime example I gave was a sea animal and a land animal. So you could come in here, you could come in here, we just waiting on these chairs, they be here about 25 minutes. But uh, a prime example that I gave was like, if a dog, you ever see a video of a dolphin on YouTube talking to a dog? No way in hell a dog should even be talking to a dolphin, let alone dogs ain't even natural. Those are, you know, Hybrid animals. A poodle is not a natural animal. So that being said, if a if a if a dog if a dolphin and a poodle can communicate with each other, you know for a fact this poodle is not here by natural means, and you know for a fact poodles don't live nowhere near by the ocean shore to where they should even be talking to dolphins. Then there's no reason why we can't be doing the same thing we are because it's it's hybrid races of people on the planet, which genetics will confirm. So that being said, we the dolphins, we the mammals, we doing the same thing that the uh, dolphin doing with the poodle with each other. And the conflict is coming from we not we not accepting that you know mm-hmm. conflict is coming from uh, everybody trying to be the same when we not the same and that's where the, the the friction is coming from you know because if you tell a frog be the same as a lizard you know what I'm trying to say mm-hmm. they could try their hardest to live in peace they not because somebody nature gonna come out <clears throat> somebody nature gonna come out and it's gonna cause conflict because of misunderstanding so we gonna say damn why would this frog try to jump over my head like that that's rude it's in the nature of the frog. You the one who don't know you're dealing with a frog. So we say, damn, why do black people do this? Why do white people do that? Why do we do that? Why do they do this? It's in the nature of our genetics. Like, for example, uh, we say Caucasian people, right? Caucasian people have 98% of their genetic material is, is in synchronization with chimpanzees. Now, this is not to be racist or nothing. This is to deal with characteristics. Because a lot of your uh, character, uh, characteristics and influences come from genetics. So with that being said, how y'all doing? We just waiting on these chairs. Y'all can come up in here. They're gonna be here about 20 minutes. So a lot of your, uh, a lot of the things you do come out of your genes, you know. So with that being said, if if uh, we know when we study chimpanzees and chimps and things like that, they actually form troops and form gangs and they kill. Now that's a fact. And the man, uh, the, it's patriarchal. So that being said, when we see, we say, then why do the Caucasians just? You know, if you look at their, if you look at Black people history, we don't have things like Vikings, Beowulf. We don't have that. You can't read Black history and be like these Africans went way over here and conquered them Africans. But you can see monkeys do that. You can see monkeys that run their ass way across the safari and go kill a whole another gang of monkeys, and that's my treat now. So when we see the the genetic composition mm-hmm. of Caucasians, we can see why they do what they do historically. So now I understand you. So since now I understand you, I know how to live around, away from, or how to deal with you to where it's safe for me. But I don't have that. I'm cheated out of that understanding if I'm told that we the same. We're not the same. I don't act like you. You know what I'm saying? We're, black people are more reptile-based. So that being said, this is why we're agile. This is why we do, uh, whatchamacallit, more reptile-prone things like the sun, etc. You know what I'm saying? So we have uh, even the reptilian part of the, part of the brain. You know what I'm saying? That's even cobras. Cobras have pineal glands. 80% of Caucasians don't have pineal glands because they don't have reptilian-based DNA. They have uh, monkey-based DNA, and monkeys don't have pineal glands. So that being said, you know, we like, if we was animals, we would be cobras, and if they were animals, they would be chimpanzees. You don't see cobras living with chimpanzees. So if I give a cobra a Bible and I give a chimpanzee a Bible and I say, God made y'all equal, live together. We gonna, they're going to fight all day. So now take the same analogy and you take black people and you take white people and you take Chinese people and you got all these different genetic variants and you say, God made us all equal, live together. You can't do no shit like that. 
Even in the zoo, they separate the animals. Mm -hmm. So you see what I'm saying? God damn, but you're going to have us living together, and you wonder why the world is in chaos. Because we're supposed to have our space, you know what I'm saying? So nature is peaceful. You know, the lions live over here, the hippos live over here. You see crocodiles and hippos in the same water. They ain't fighting. Because they know, they know, the, you know what I mean? To keep their space. So humans need to come to that understanding. But so, so like I said, technically, there are extraterrestrials on the planet. There are people who are hybrid. There's, you know, humanoid capacities where you could obtain a certain level of intelligence and interact with somebody. And we the only ones who ignorant of that, you know? And then it's like, when you study black, nobody could study black history and not come across. You can't study no history. Not Chinese history, not Puerto, you can't study no culture and don't come across them talking about interfacing with extraterrestrials. You can ignore it, but you can't say it's not there. It's two things you're gonna, if, if anybody really study history, right? Not just, oh, this happened on this day. We talking about history is not, uh, America was founded. History is who was here before that was here, and then who was here before that was here, and then who was here before that was here. So history is not, oh, I study Egypt. History was who was here before the Egyptians came and built this. That's history. So, exactly. So, there's no way you can study history and you don't see somebody say, I was interacting with people who came down from the sky. Whether you over here and Native Americans call them sky people, Chinese people call them uh, serpent gods, uh, the, whatchamacallit. Uh, what you call it? Caucasians. I forgot what Caucasians called it, but they got that drawing all them lights fighting in the sky over Germany. Everybody did. Everybody claims interaction with extraterrestrials, including ancient Egypt. The only people who have who, who think it's a joke today is because we've been enslaved to the number one. We've been enslaved to the number one. We don't. We don't realize we live in a circle, and it's a whole lot of numbers in a circle. You know, so we think the one is outside. We think the dot is not in the circle. You know what I'm saying? So we we ignorant to the X in the circle. We think we out here and and this is God interacting with us. Instead of we inside of here and we just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then once we get to ten, when we come back to one, it's another circle, which will be equivalent to the flower. Line. So we ignorant to the actual mathematical proportions and sciences of creation. And it causes us to be ignorant consciously. So and that 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 plays an entire role on your being psychologically. Morally, maturely, you know what I'm saying? So, like even racism, like, you know, I don't, I, honestly, in my soul, I'm not racist. I just understand people, you know what I'm saying? But if you were, if you somebody who let the media raise you, you know, or your parents let the TV raise you, you're gonna fall victim to a lot of shit people do, you know what I'm saying? Even with, like I said, with Caucasians. I don't have a problem with a Caucasian being a police. I have you with a problem with you being my police. Because we not, you don't understand me. You don't see black people in China saying, Get on the ground. No, you're ch Chinese people should, Chinese, should police them. White people should police them. And black people should police us. Because only you gonna understand you. So it's not about racism, but it's just who gives you a right to uh, be the authoritarian over somebody that's not you. And I can interact with you and respect you. You know what I'm saying? I deal with white people every day, Chinese people every day, and we understand each other. We don't gotta fight. I go to MMA, I get punched by white people. So you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a lot. I've been in prison, I've had to live with white people. So a lot of people will just be talking, you never, you ain't been outside your house. You haven't been in life. If you come outside, you're gonna have to deal with another race. But my thing is, don't respect my motherfucking mind and respect my beliefs. And if you don't, then what you wanna do? But my thing is, you can't create a, uh, 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 like the eve, the anger, and all of the shit and the frustration that we feel comes from a misunderstanding. You know, we don't wanna know why. You know, why do white people enslave them? Why do they do this shit? That's in their nature to be conquest. People, that's what they do. That's in their genetic nature, you know what I'm saying? You don't see snakes, snakes don't run in packs. You don't see 50 cobras together. So I say you don't see that. So you don't see cobras taking over other, you know, snakes territory. So you don't, that's not naturally in black people. We do what reptiles do, we find somewhere, we make a nest, and this is our shit. So, you know, we gonna make home where we at, we gonna turn up, that's what we do. It's not in us to be adventurers and be conquesting people. It is in this race to be that. So, you know, we, we keep getting upset about them living in the court. That's what the fuck they do. We need to find what we do and do what we do and keep them up off us. So with that being said, you know. Fair yeah. right. so, so for me and my family, my brother's experienced a lot of uh, extraterrestrial in his life. Wisdom. He's, and he's met brothers that in, embraced him on the bus and stepped off the bus and disappeared. And the bus driver started screaming. Mm -hmm. And when, when you in a, in a in a matrix like me and with our people being so lost for so long. I don't got, I'm a, my man gonna bring me some. Why, you got some? No, water, my son is like thing. Oh, hey, it's a, uh, I, just, I just bought a whole bunch. Well, not a yeah. whole bunch, but you know, I did what I could. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna say it's some at the uh at the corner right there. There you go. You save it. Yeah, hey, it's a fan too. You want it? You heard? Hey, so you want the fan? All right. 
You know, basically that's what I was saying. Have you been enlightened like this your entire life? Because yeah, I've never we, been. Because we've, we've experienced a lot of stuff in my family. And so when we ride around Philly, and I'm recently just getting back to the West Coast, and I see our people in the state that they're in, I'm like, when is there going to be a great awakening for people to reach the level where you at, where I'm at, you know what I'm saying, to, to really snap out of this funk? Because he, my brother's right here, and he's experienced a lot of extraterrestrial activity in his life. And so I said, why was he chosen for them to approach him? And if we have other beings or other family members in other uh, dimensions, I actually believe they don't want to kick it with us because we twist. So it's like, That's if, right. if you can't figure out this equation that you're in, and it's like a testing ground, then we're not coming out here to fuck with y'all because y'all can't even get this right. It's, uh, let me say this, I think we got some new people. Our chair is going to be here in like 20 minutes. Our chair people was late, so y'all welcome to come in if y'all want. And when the chairs get here, we're going to do what we do. Now, to answer your question, and I had a lot of experience. I just don't talk about my experiences because different people was built different ways. And I'm not the type of person where like I could take ridicule good to where I feel like I can't last back out. So by me being a public figure, it's hard for me to be my natural self because motherfuckers be trying to sue you and all of that. So I just keep a lot of my experiences to myself because I, I got trolls and I got all kind of shit. I don't, I don't like, ain't nobody going to belittle me or ever violate me like that. So I just keep a lot of my uh, stuff to myself. But the thing is, the, the, uh, I did a video on this the other day, like the one true law, which is free will. And I got cousins right now that I don't fuck with because they goofies. Right. You know what I'm saying? And we, you my blood cousin and I don't fuck with you. I fuck with some of y'all in here harder than I fuck with my blood cousin. So it's the same thing, you know. If you don't see, if, when you get on, it's, it's about path, you know. And when you're dealing with yourself, the only path is free will. You know, you're using your free will to be to be better. So if you don't see somebody trying to better themselves, I can't fuck with you. If I study and I'm going hard to pass this test, whether we're in real school or not. If I'm studying and I'm and I'm staying up late and you skipping class, nigga, I don't, I don't even want to hang with you. It ain't that I can't because you're just the total opposite of me. So if you got beans that's well elevated. In the level of intellect, and then they looking at ghetto ass planet Earth where niggas can't even not litter. What the fuck I'm coming down here to talk to you for? And then you looking at black people, and you got gotta be real, black people, we doing all of this complaining, and you know, we doing all of this bitching, but we got the power to change our situation. So if you won't even change your own situation, what the fuck I look like coming down here to do for you was easy. You know, we not in no higher situation. And I know niggas don't want to hear that, but the truth, we are not in a higher situation. All we gotta do is redirect. What we pay attention to. So I don't I don't like niggas keep saying all oh, this communities impoverished. How many niggas brought Floyd Mayweather tickets that week when you fought? Okay, nigga, no. You're it's impoverished because of you. So I tell niggas, if you go to a nigga community and you keep all the nigga receipts for 30 days, you're gonna see hair products, uh drug and alcohol products, and clothing products for the majority of their purchases. Now, when you ask them, what did you spend on your house that maintains your your house, not nobody else's house? That's gonna be the minimal. Now go look at a white, go to a white community, the total opposite. You're not gonna see weed, you're not gonna see none of that, you're not gonna see Jordans, but you are gonna see grass fertilizer. You're gonna see all kinds of shit. So you it, it's like, you know, we don't give a fuck. And that's just a raw dog truth. And I'ma say it like that. So we don't give a fuck. So you can't expect nobody to go fuck here. You see somebody gonna come wave them over there? Right, you, right. Your neighbor don't give a fuck. Ain't nobody coming no thirty thousand light years to give a fuck. I'm not. I wouldn't. If I was an alien and I was looking down, I would say, we out of here. We out of these niggas. This, this nigga watching Love Hip Hop. This nigga, I can, I don't, who is this nigga? Write him down. Make sure he never comes dark. Man. Write that nigga down. So, you know, it's the truth. So, when beings interact with you, it's, it's off of your, it's off of your awakening and your willingness. You know what I'm saying? And it's really just information. You know what I'm saying? They just give you information and they give you confirmation in your spiritual growth. Because, like I said, the experience is to oh, is to guide your consciousness. It's like, let's go back to the dolphin and the dog. The dolphin had no idea that a dog existed until it seen it. And it said, oh, shit, it's a dog. And then they started having an a, a interaction. And from there, they learned a module of communication to where they can exchange information. So now the consciousness of the dog is expanded. Because the dog said, well, goddamn, there's a being here that lives down there that I can talk to. Right. So that's it. So that's all they do is they vibrate into your life however they come and they say, okay, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? You understand I'm here. Here's the experience. Boom. And we live in a world where that don't, you know, metaphysics is eliminated because metaphysics debunks religion. So we live in a society where everybody's so, uh, like, you know, it's like, this is the hypocrisy of, of America, you know? I'm going to talk about America because I live in America. A nigga will tell you Jesus or Allah is coming back. Well, if he's coming back, he's not here, which means he's a fucking extraterrestrial. So if he got to come back, he got to come back from out there in here. So you can believe that a, 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 a spirit or a freak, whatever you think he is, 
can come back from out of there and come in here, but if I tell you that that actually happened to me, I'm crazy. Ain't that some shit? Mm -hmm. So that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So that being said, but nigga say I seen a UFO, or I seen some lights. Oh, nigga, you crazy, nigga, you crazy. But then a the nigga tell you when Jesus come, y'all going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? You know what I'm trying to say? But nigga, ain't that's crazy. That's the same to them. So you know what I'm saying? Or if you say y'all had a dream. Or this happened to me in the experience, nigga be like, man, you treat us crazy, but you just pray to a ghost. You pray to some shit you can't see. At least I'm telling you I see the shit. At least I'm saying, nigga, it looked it like this. You know what I'm saying, nigga, I can draw it out. I can draw a description. You can't even give me no visual description. So, uh, like I said, they interact with you based off of you. And you can call them into your life. It's called a uh, CE5, a post encounter of the fifth kind. And, and one thing I want to say, sorry about it. Mm -hmm. um, now you good? As far as, as, far as um, military discipline. And, uh, and us advancing in a great awakening, uh, you start seeing young brothers, instead of smoking black and mild, which is 200 cigarettes and one cigar, mm -hmm. then you start seeing young brothers, of, about hundreds of thousands, jogging and getting back in shape, and getting back in uniform with their minds and their spirit and celestial. And the police pulling them over and asking them what y'all doing and things of that nature, like with Black, with like, uh, black Wall Street. Why did they not have, because by now, all the Chinatowns would have been black town. Why did they not have a military? And every, and every you gotta ask them pacifist niggas. And every, every destroyed <laughs> I would have had one. Rosewood. Shit. I would have had two. Elijah right. Muhammad had a military. But. Right, yeah. but I'm just saying, everything has got destroyed. But my thing but is this, build, e even that though, even that though, is, uh, so you can keep call it attacked. It? Yeah, even that though. Mother. Hold on, what's that? I'm sorry, I can't. My brain be whoop. All right, cool. So, even that, you know what I'm saying? It's, uh, who is this talking about the doors is locked? I'll help him with chicken. It's a 205. I don't know what, I don't know what address they think they at. Let me help somebody out. Y'all read that sign, right, family? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, bro, the door ain't locked, bro. What door are you at? Nah, bro. What? What at? You at one South Sixty Ninth Street? Right on the corner. Huh? Oh, the door. Somebody, somebody locked the door down there. Where's say young? Where's say young Pharaoh upstairs, right? Bro, it's a sign. Nah, ain't nobody locked that door, bro. You look. Oh, where? Oh, nigga, I don't know. Where are you at? It's, yeah. Somebody come, some, somebody coming down there right now. All right. It's, all right. I don't know. Where are you at? What was I just, huh? Now the chair dude about to pull up. The chair dude is... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He about to pull up. Matter of fact, let me call him. I want to go back to what you just said. CE5 what? Before you were talking? Close encounter of the fifth con. Okay. That's where you call it. Okay. It's like, you, it's no different. If you do voodoo, when you call a spirit, that's uh -huh. a CE5. Okay. A CE4 is when they say, I'm here, but I'm gone. A CE5 is when you say, nigga, come here, because I got some. I got something I want to interact with you. Okay. So, you know, it's called, and we call it Conjuring, or they make all of these scary-ass movies about it, mm -hmm. and that's just CE5s. If you watch okay. The Conjuring, that's a CE5. If you watch we the Ouija board, that's a CE5. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Where you call the spirit, where you call, it's like how you can call somebody's phone. Mm -hmm. Even court is a ritualistic process. And before you get a warrant, right, or a summons, what is a summon? I'm summoning the spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, if my name John and his name John, because you got people with the same exact names, mm -hmm. right, technically we both can't be John. And I'm African. So with that being, or Ab whatever you want to call it, African, Aboriginal, Melanated, whatever. So that being said, I know damn well my name ain't John. Mm -hmm. So John is just a title that holds a frequency. Mm -hmm. So if my name John and his name John and I die, and you say, man, my man John died, your mind goes to me. It don't go to him. Mm -hmm. So the name is just to connect you energetically. So in court, they say we have a summons for John Doe. And then you physically come say, I'm John Doe. And you come in there just like a soul. And then they charge your soul. This is why they use electricity. They charge you with a crime. Mm -hmm. And just like your debit card, when you make a purchase and they get charged, it gets depleted numer uh, numerically. <coughs> so that being said, they say we charge you with the crime. And you pay with your time because your energy is depleted over time. Mm -hmm. So they sentence you to a certain amount of time and confinement, right? Because just like your cell, I can find your body. And they put you in a cell. Mm -hmm. 
and you in a cell, literally acting like cells in the body. So how do your cells in your body work? They come out for a certain amount of time, and then they go back in for a certain amount of time. Like people don't know, like your digestive system don't even work past four o'clock. This is why if you eat past four o'clock, you're gonna gain more weight. So your body ain't just digesting food all day. Your cells take a break too. So that being said, what do they do in prison? They let your ass out that cell, you do whatever they do, and you go back in there. And you acting just like a cell in the body and in the nervous system, and you were charged with a crime. Spiritually or egotistically, because this is where your straw man is. Your straw man is just a monetized spirit. Mm -hmm. So you got spirit, ego, and then you got straw man, or you know, the nigga that your ID say you are. Mm -hmm. So that being said, you know, you get charged with the crime, and then you get depleted spiritually for a certain amount of time, and then you get kicked back into society. So that's a whole occultic Masonic process, you know, that people ignore. Yup, what's up with it? So, like, say, like, when someone gets a uh, charge, say they get triple life, is that essentially what it is? Like, even though their body is not presently in prison, their soul is still attracted? I think that if jail penetrates you enough, you can keep yourself there. If somebody get raped and killed in this bathroom, if the experience hurt enough, they'll be the ghost of this goddamn thing. So, you know, this is why people say, you know, try not to, try not to emotionally feed into stuff, you know? And, like, our parents trick us into doing that. Because as, as a kid, naturally, you don't care. Like, as a kid, you can take something, they like, I don't care. They really don't. But that's good. But we be like, you better care. And we teach them to attach themselves to the loss in a, of the event that's occurring, you know? So, you know, we got to be like Buddha. You know what I'm trying to say? I'm going to deal with this shit, higher body. But if it don't go my way, I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. that's, that's like a tricky mentality to have. But it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to try my best. But if I fail, I honestly don't give a fuck. So that way I'm not attached to the frequency of the environment to where my soul is still here. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. So we got to start... Uh, which I'm calling, I touched on this in the interview I did uh, yesterday. It's gonna be on YouTube next week. We gotta recompose ourselves emotionally of what we think it is. You know, we've been taught that it's bad not to care. No, the fuck is not. You trying to say? No, the fuck is not. I don't give a fuck. Forget care, upgrade that. Just don't give a. I don't care. So you know, what I'm trying to say we've been taught certain things you should care about. You know, what I'm trying to say you should care about your kids and your family. But if you lose your iPhone. You know what I'm trying to say? You're going to be upset, deal with it, but let that shit go. I don't want to hear a week later, because I'm the type of nigga that I tell you, but I don't care. You know, don't call me talking about your girl broke up. You got about three days of calling me talking about y'all broke up. By the end of the week, I don't give a damn, nigga. Shit, you should have locked your phone. I don't want to hear shit. I don't. So that means I'm telling you the truth. So, you know, it's not bad not to care. You know what I'm trying to say? It's, 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 it's keeping you from being viral. You know what I'm trying to say? So let me call the... Uh, let me call the chair, man, because that's right. We definitely got to help him get the chairs up here. Yo, you here, bro? Yeah. All right, we're going to come down there and help you when you pull up with the chairs. All right. He said he about to be here in a minute. Yeah. Share people talking about we gonna give you your refund. You fucking right. You damn right you gonna give me my refund. Ordered them chairs them there a month ago. What are you talking about? You forgot? Right. But uh We warmed up. We warmed up. So this gonna be y'all gonna love this lecture, man. This is This is the lecture. <laughs> we talking about now. Okay, okay, I'll watch you. But uh, yeah, we 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 going in, so we going in. And I'm a uh, question, I'm just, guys. Yes, yes. So how how close was Elijah with the Yakub theory? He was real close, but he didn't tell you. He probably knew. He probably knew the whole truth, but he was a mason, so he wasn't gonna tell you that. And I ain't gonna say he probably knew. Let me take that back. I say he was. He is 85 at percent accurate. The only thing he was missing was the genetic process of creation. Because Elijah Muhammad teaches that Yaqub took him on the island of Pilon, which is in the Bible is called Patmos, and every 200 years, he grafted <coughs> the color out of him through sexual reproduction. But when he was missing, and there's nothing wrong with that, because, like I say, it's called breakthrough information. Breakthrough information is when you say, damn, I found this out, and didn't want nobody want me to find this out. So you're going to be about 90% accurate, you know? And if you could be off a little bit, I'll take that 85, feel me? And you got people like Young Pharaoh to come give you the 15%. So that being said, right. Right. when he said they was grafting on the island, that was the graft process or the creation process was incorrect. Everything else was correct. Because you can't, if I right now, if I have sex with a light-skinned black person, you can't become genetically different than me. You trying to say? If an African have sex with, uh, who's a naturally light-skinned black woman? I can't get no names. Beyonce. Beyonce. If an African have sex with Beyonce, 
he doesn't become a Caucasian. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't become a Chinese person. He doesn't. So he didn't explain properly the origins of every race. You feel me? Every every race got their own it, it, uh, source of existence. You know, just like every but animal. They were using albinos, correct? Yeah, but the that's al where the light, the light germ came from. The but albinos. not really because right. it's a, it, what kind of albino? You got Chinese albinos. Well, I mean, black was, albinos. When he was speaking at the time, it was only black or melanated people on the planet. But that wasn't that wasn't that wasn't correct because when we talk about the uh, the uh, creation process, where did where did where did if white people came from black people? Where do ninety eight percent of chimpanzee DNA come in if we have zero percent Neanderthal today? See me? So he didn't have all the pieces. He was he like I said, I'll give him 85. 85 and I will come in that. But you was missing 15. That's not your fault. He he didn't probably didn't know. Or like I said, he was a Mason, so he probably wasn't gonna tell you that. So he more he wasn't gonna tell you that. Now just like Farrakhan's not gonna tell you that. But outside of that, uh whatchamacallit? It's called genetic engineering. They do it today. They just took a pig mm -hmm. and they spliced it with a human and they let it grow. Mm -hmm. So now if you take this human pig and you say, hey, you came from pigs that evolved into you. Here we are today. Here we are today. So you splice a nigga and tell him that the shit you spliced him with evolved into his ass. And now he has a sufficient psychological module to exist. You don't feel like a, you know, it's like Frankenstein. You tell Frankenstein, nigga, you're a monster created in the lab. He gonna go crazy. Oh, he gonna go crazy. So you, why you don't want to hear that shit? Mm -hmm. Nigga, you're spliced with chimpanzee. I'm sorry, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> you my man, yo. I mean, you all right. But nigga, you're spliced, nigga. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to hear that shit. But if you tell them the chimpanzee nigga went to Hogwarts with Harry Potter and learned how to evolve, hiscus piscus, and turn into you, it's more comfortable. You feel me? It's more comfortable to deal with that, to believe that God turned the monkey into you. Feel what I'm saying? Versus to say, nigga, extraterrestrials created you to a gangbang on the planet. That niggas can't cope with that. You know what I'm trying to say? So it's called reality check, and they don't want that reality check. And uh, no Mason's gonna give you the truth, because they probably don't know it, and if they do know it, they're not gonna tell you. They took the oath not to tell you. So, like I said, he was 85, and Yakub is like, they think Yakub is a big head black scientist. That's not true. Yakub is a, is a word. See, people don't understand, some of these words be attributes. Associated with a non with an entity that's no longer present. You know what I'm trying to say? So if we say Yaku created the Caucasian race, Yaku just means subplanter. Sub means substitute. Planter means the plant. So somebody genetically substituted and implanted a race of people here. How do we confirm this? History. There was black people over there in Ireland called the Twas, no longer there. Black people over here in China, no longer there. Black people over here, no longer there. But for all of those black people that were no longer there, we have a new form of them genetically, they're acting as they were. That's a fact. So we can see the subplanting take place, but w w people just being too literal. Ain't no big head black person take no boat of people over there and say, you have sex with you, and you have sex with you, and you get the fuck out of here. That don't even make no sense. And then outside of that, it wouldn't be enough time, that mm -hmm. wouldn't be enough time to create every other race. You know I mean? Even if he did that with Caucasians, okay, well, you still have to explain Asians, Korean, because Asians and Koreans is not the same. Or, you know, Chinese people and Koreans are not the same. That's why they get mad when you call them each other. Mm -hmm. So you got to explain the difference between genetics, Koreans, and, I mean, you got to explain the, the genetic difference between a Chinese, Korean, and an Asian. You know I mean? you got to respect their lineage, you know, because they're not the same. They're not. So you got to explain the difference between an African and an African-American, because we're not the same all the way genetically. We're not. So, you know, it's like a pit bull is not a poodle. But they're both dogs. But you got to respect their pedigree. You know, so the pedigree explanation is what he was missing. Like I said, he probably didn't know. He probably did know. Wasn't going to tell you. He probably didn't. I don't know. But I know that he's 80. He was 85% correct. And he provided people with more than enough information to go seek on their own and fill in the fix and fill in the blank. You know what I'm trying to say? So, you know, he did what he had to do as far as putting that information out there. You know, but and they just perverted it. And people just, you know, make it seem like the white man's a devil. And now you can't even say that shit because it backfired on you. You know what I'm saying? People were saying the white man's the devil for so long, and now if you say the white man's the devil, they just look at you like, well, nigga, get out of here, nigga. We, you, you be trying to live harmonious. You talking that bullshit. But devil just comes from the Arabic word shaitan, which means white. You know what I'm trying to say? And that's where they got Satan from. Satan. You know what I'm trying to say? So that's it's all just wordplay. You know what I'm saying? And we we're we're being uh we're taking the word, and we got niggas like Malachi New York gotta come put a whole entity on this shit, and the entity don't like Yaku. Who told you Yaku was a big head son? Nobody told you that. 
Nobody recovered nobody over there. You know what I'm saying? It's like niggas will debate you all day and say, well, if Jesus exists, show us the body. If Yakub exists, show me the body. You know what I'm saying? So you got people who taking information and they got an agenda, so they putting their own twist on it to further. You know what I'm trying to say? That's why I was saying about even Malachi, the Yorban and the Wapians, because I study every group before I speak on it. You know what I'm trying to say? Half the motherfucking aliens, who told you them aliens exist? And this is why I can't nobody have a mature conversation about extraterrestrials because you already came here on some clown shit and fucked it up. Nobody told you that. You never seen none of them. Who told you that this being talks like this? You never seen, you didn't do, you didn't, you didn't, uh, you didn't give us no concrete foundation on where you got that from. You know, at least if Russ said he had an experience and I say I had an experience, nigga, I can show you. Now you don't gotta believe it, but I can, if you ask me the same story 20 years from now, niggas coming out the same way that it came. Y'all don't have none of that. Don't know the Wapians have none of that. You never seen, all oh, you got a whole book on extraterrestrials and you none of you niggas never seen none of them so where did you get that from you know who told you yaku was a big head scientist where's yaku's mother where's his bones you know it wasn't it was a uh a being but that's the point i'm trying to make people is bringing fucking words to life and creating stories around the word and we've taken it to too literal just like jesus just means the son but people go to church every sunday and give their money to a nigga that they think exists so you know that's where the information becomes uh, tricky and infiltrated, like even even in Egypt, right? People say, oh, the, the Egyptians accidentally built a uh, bent pyramid, you know, as they were learning to build the pyramids. But that's not true, because the built the bent pyramid is new. It's not old. So how did they go to build that? And they fucked up and learned how to build the Great Pyramid when the Great Pyramid was here before. Right. So what they did was they didn't know what the fuck they was talking about, and they tried to fill in the blanks. And there's nothing wrong with that, but just say that. Don't be introducing that shit to people like it's facts, because you don't even know where you got it from. Because if you ask, a nigga, ask any nigga that got an um, ask any of these uh, Egypt niggas, any of these niggas, how do you know that Egyptians tried to build these pyramids and fuck this one up, learning how to become greater, outside of white people telling you that? You don't know. Because when you go do the geology on Egypt, the bigger the structure, the older it is. You know? The, the, you can tell Egypt's age because it gets smaller. The big ton pyramids are older. The small muddy brick pyramids are younger. So that being said, how was they trying to learn how to build those using these if motherfucking those are here for these? So the whole scope, the whole story got to go in the garbage. Now, when you do the research on the story, they say Snefru is the one who commissioned the building of the big pyramid. Now, Snefru just means double harmony, and the big pyramid actually is made up of a certain stone that picks up. Uh, sound waves in the atmosphere from two different angles, and this has been confirmed by the military. So the, the name for the person who built the pyramid is just an attribute for the function of the pyramid. That's it. A nigga named Snefru didn't come build this motherfucker. You know what I'm trying to say? The word, so it just, it's an attribute that people are taking too literal, you know, and it's like we need to get, that we can't just keep taking shit and saying, oh, this is a name brand nigga, and he said it, so I'm taking it. Even me, if I took the research, what I said, fact check me, I don't got a problem. But we can't say, oh, Elijah Muhammad said that, so he's the law of knowing. No. Okay, this was right, Elijah, this was wrong, but I respect whatever you was trying to do, and I'm going to put the tweak in there. Same thing with me. You think somebody not going to come behind me 10 years from now and say, man, that nigga Young Pearl was right, but this was wrong. And I'm going to say, nigga, thank you very much. Wish I would have had you 10 years ago. Period. So that being said, you know, it's, uh, we can't keep, we can't, we keep trying to fill in the blanks and people not admitting that. Feel me? I don't, not nothing wrong to say what you don't know. I tell you all the time, I don't know. Niggas ask me questions every day. I don't know, nigga. I've never heard of that. But I do know this, and I do know that. So, it's, uh, the information, especially like names, and the reason I gave that Snefru analogy is because that's important, because people don't really know the true age of Egypt. Egypt is like an 80,000 year old civilization, and niggas be talking about dynasties, the dynastic, what dynastic period of Egypt? What the fuck are you talking about? Nobody, ain't no minis come over here and foundate someone that was already here. You know what I'm trying to say? But we just trying to fill in the blanks because we don't know. That's like white people say, the way I feel about when white people say they came over here and found this land is the way I feel when niggas say, talk about dynastic Egypt. They didn't come over here and build no shit that was already here. You didn't you come over here and, and build no sphinx that was already here. And then the story is oxymoronic because they say, that we built this and we was over here living in a, a, a populations of millions of people, but then they come, they say Alexander the Great came and nobody was here. So where the fuck they go? If all of these people in Egypt was here, how did this nigga come and just have a free pass up in here and walk right up in the library? Because nobody was here. I think that Egypt was an abandoned civilization 
that's my opinion on it. And I think certain people live there, but not in the totality of the story that they're telling you. And I think that certain kings and queens did exist. All of them didn't exist. I damn sure think that they, they found over a billion mummies in Egypt. So I think that they took some of the mummies and said, we're going to say that this nigga did that. That's what I think they did. That's like a nigga coming over here to Philly, going to a graveyard and saying, we're going to say this nigga built this building. Dig him up. This nigga built this. And what this shit do? This building holds people. So what's the word for holding people? Containment. The king containment built this shit. And then niggas gonna read it and think they fucking philologists. And be out here trying to debate. Like, nigga, in 1740 BC, you don't know what the fuck you talking about. So, you know, we gotta be, we gotta be fair with the information. And we have to be well intricate in research. Because a lot of niggas don't know what they're talking about. And this is why I have a lot of flat and I catch a lot of beef. Because I don't, I research. Can't be mad at me. I didn't tell you, you had 30 years to fact check this shit. You know what I'm saying? You had 20, 30 years, nigga, to get it right. Don't be mad at me because I came in here and got it right. So, you know, that's just my thing. That's why I use, I don't subscribe to no organization, but I don't down the organization. Like, even Hebrew. People be like, if Hebrews in my lecture all the time, I tell them, I don't got to be a Hebrew, but y'all niggas is right, but y'all just wrong. To me. <laughs> if you right to you, that's cool. We can live in harmony. But I don't down nobody. You feel me? Even with the Bible. I use the Bible all the time to prove my point. Even though I'm, I'm letting you know it's Masonic and this is how it got in there. But some of that shit be right, you know what I'm saying? But it's just tweaked, you know what I'm trying to say? It's like, like I said, when they talk about, like even the Bible, when they say, God, let there be light, technically God did say, let there be light, but just not in the form that we think They're talking about, you know, radio waves and shit like that, but I don't be just trying to down nobody and bang on nobody, but I'm not going to allow nobody to just tell me some shit right because you was a name brand nigga. Not happening. You're not going to come over here talking about, I've been doing this shit for 15 years, and I know what I'm talking, because you don't know what you're talking about. Sorry, nigga, you, you failed. You've been name grade a couple times now. You know what I'm saying? I tell people like my motto is if I'm in fifth grade and I pass and you in eighth grade and you fail and I'm go I pass from sixth grade to seventh and you in eighth grade and you fail and I pass from seventh to eighth and I get there, don't be talking about oh nigga, you should cheat off my test. I've been doing this long. <laughs> Hell no, nigga. Hell no. I'm taking my own shot. So that's how I look at niggas out here. I don't want to hear that shit, you've been out here 30 years, because all I see here in my brain is, nigga, I'm just now getting to the test, you've been taking this shit. You might not want to cheat off your shit. You might not, you feel me? So you have more than enough time, you know what I'm saying, to get it right. So my thing is, you know, we have to be fair. We got to be fair with, with growth. And we have to be fair with that we don't know. Because this is my thing. If they killed the Behold the White Pale Horse nigga for putting out a book on the shelf, that lets you know you ain't just putting no book on no shelf that they don't want on no shelf. So all of these books that's on the shelf, they letting them be there, they don't give a fuck. That's out of war, period. If you got grenades and rocket launchers, you would let niggas go get some little sticks and arrows because you finna send the Air Force over there to bomb them. But if you hear niggas is running to get some Air, some, some, uh, uh, air Force and get equal, then you gonna cut them first. So my thing is, half the books that niggas read is not a threat. You know what I'm saying? It's not a threat. Niggas not, niggas not even reading the right history books. And you know what I'm saying? It's just the truth. It just is what it is. And we got to be <coughs> humble enough to admit that. We don't know. You don't know. You didn't create it, nigga. You chose to buy Jordans and instead of instead of investing in your own intellectual research team. White people invest in shit to where they can go to other countries and live. We be reading about motherfuckers. White people be living with motherfuckers. They be over there in, in Tibet right with the monks taking notes. They got Harvard professors over there right now in the Himalayas studying monks. We don't do that. We just get the the, the, the the information that they just study and get what we choose what they choose to give us and then we go off that and we think that we was the niggas over there doing the study. You know what I'm saying? So we don't know about Egypt, we don't know about Egypt. It's not even Egypt don't Egypt didn't exist. I'm talking about half that shit did not exist. That shit gonna hurt niggas though. Gonna hurt them. <laughs> <laughs> that shit gonna hurt a lot of niggas, but it didn't exist. It didn't exist the way you For your video, uh heart rate frequency, right? Bye. To follow your heart, right? That's right. What exactly did you mean by that? By follow your heart, I mean, uh, you know, your soul already knows what's best. Hey, y'all welcome to come up in here. We just waiting on these chairs. They should be here about 15, 20 minutes, but y'all can cram up in here. Our, our chair delivering people was late, so, you know, but we doing our thing. But by follow your heart, I just mean like, uh, yo, 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 it's like water, right? If you take water, like water, this water is contained in this bottle. But as soon as I pour it on the floor, it goes back to its original shape, which is formless. But water is intelligent. It, it, it knows. So it knows not to be confined, you know, to, to concepts. So your soul knows not to be confined to worldly concepts. So your heart, you know, your heart 
uh, controls your brain. People don't understand mm-hmm. that. Your heart actually talks to your brain and your brain talks to your nervous system. It's not the other way around. So that being said, your heart is being uh, delivered information through what you call your emotions. That would be your soul, you know? And it's like, if you listen to your heart, you can't never go wrong because that's the primary source of information. And a lot of people don't listen to their heart. It's like, we can say right now, uh, I can be a police, right? I can be a black police. Let's, I'm going to give a scenario. I'm a black police. I'm with two other black police. This white boy is not doing anything wrong. And my black partners decide to be assholes and fuck with him. Now, in my heart, I know that that's wrong. And I have the ability to say, hey, you leave him the fuck alone. Or I can mentally say, I'm not going against the force. Mm-hmm. Feel me? Mm-hmm. So we say, listen to your heart. The world fucked up because ain't nobody listening to what they know is right. You know what I'm saying? You're just doing what the fuck the ideology tells you is cool. So, you know, I could be with 10 of my niggas and they could say, we about to rob this nigga for his chain. I know he ain't quite to leave this man the fuck alone. Mm-hmm. But in my mind, I'm going to say, I don't give a fuck, nigga. It's up, fuck. I fuck the ops. He ain't even an op. You don't even know that nigga. <laughs> so it's like we say, we listen to your heart. All I'm saying is do what you know initially is right. We be convincing ourselves to ignore our motherfucking self. My thing is, you know, I'm just not going to hang with a nigga that's going to have me even making that judgment call. Now, some shit, some people, you know, some shit, you know, like I would never snitch on a nigga. You know what I'm trying to say? So certain, certain shit I'm not doing. It is what it is. You know, the police asked me which way you ran, nigga. My heart said you went that way and you really went that way. So that's it. But, but for moral purposes, you know, because if you look at people, People is fucked up internally, like, and I deal with reality, I don't deal, I deal like, if you look in the hood, niggas shoot cats, niggas do some weird shit, you know what I'm trying to say, on some real shit, so he's gonna be 100, niggas just do crazy shit, and it's like, nigga, what's wrong with you, you know what I'm trying to say, and that's niggas ain't listening to their heart, and then if you say it, now we have a, 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 a program blocker that tells you, oh nigga, you being too emotional, or, how the fuck I'm being too emotional, because I said don't shoot the cat, you know what I'm saying, nigga, it ain't doing nothing to you, so now I'm a pussy, now I'm weak. So it's like, it's so many layers of fuckery, you know, fuckology, <laughs> as I like to call it, fuck ecology that we have to delete, you know, because people have enslaved ourselves to fake cool standard that's really not cool, you know? So, so is, there, cool. is there, like, a way to, like, break out of that? Don't care. Don't care. I don't give a fuck. Honestly, how many times I say that today? Yeah. <laughs> About 50? Mm-hmm. That's what you got to do. But the number one thing you got to do is prepare yourself to lose friends and family. Yeah. Cause they gonna try to enslave you to giving a fuck. Yeah. Like you got people that do you feel. You got mothers that do you dirty. Yeah. And they be like, I'm your mother. No matter what we go, I don't give a fuck. Where's my mother? You just came and fucked my whole life up. What you talking about? So we gotta be willing to uh, be internally able to override other people's perceptions of us. Period. It's like when I was in the streets. And like I, I, I was in the streets. Like I was, I wasn't a nigga. That was, I was in the streets. I had fed beefs, all that, and, and not making this shit up. I was in the street. I can't. I play this in Buffalo. I can't go right now, or niggas gonna get the whack. Period. So that being said, it's the truth. So I was loved and I was praised for stupid shit I did. You know. Yeah. But now when I'm intelligent, niggas don't give a fuck about that. Don't nobody disrespect me though. But, but it's just to the point where niggas don't care. Like if I throw a party, I have a thousand motherfuckers there. If I throw a lecture in Buffalo, I might have forty people there. So that being said, it's just to the point where it's like. You gotta be willing to allow people's perceptions of you not to affect you, you know, or or, 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 or the criticism not to affect you. So you gotta really not care. Cause a lot of times the only time you care about people is because you already then created them a space of importance in your mind. Like you don't care about a penny, but if you lose a hundred dollars, you be like, hold on, bro, I gotta go back and see why I dropped my shit. Cause you know, already told yourself this is important. So if a nigga that you don't know walk up on you and say, um, I ain't really feeling that shit you did, you I don't care. But if your mom or your girl or somebody that you love say it, you gonna be like, all right, baby, let me, you know what I'm saying? You ask your friends to critique your music. You don't ask a nigga you don't know. You ask your man, like, bro, you listen to this song, is this shit hot? Yeah. And if he say no, nah, you be like, what do I need to change? Because you care. But you got to delete that. <laughs> you got to get to the point where I say, nigga, this is the ugliest motherfucking drawing, and this shit worth a billion dollars. Nigga, this is my shit in the art studio. This, this shit hot. Because I said it's hot. So we got to, until we get to that point, it's a wrap. And you're not going to get to that point until you develop a very loving relationship with yourself. And some people can't. Some yep. people can't. Some people can't talk to themselves. Some niggas can't be do an experiment. See, I want get a nigga at your house. Mm-hmm. Ask the nigga to use his phone, right? Mm-hmm. Don't even use it. Just go outside. See how that nigga act by itself. Mm-hmm. Soon as boredom kicking, that nigga gonna go crazy. Mm-hmm. Yo, yo. Soon as a nigga gotta gotta think about his own self, some niggas can't do that. Yeah. You know, this is why people kill themselves in jail. Cause they get in that cell and they be like, I don't have nothing to distract me, so I have to reflect on myself. Oh, I can't do it. Can't do self-reflection. So, you know, you gotta go through that process. Some people have to go home and say, 
You know, I like this about myself. I don't like this about myself. You know, I did some fuck shit last week. I shouldn't have did. Can't do that anymore. You know, we got to just be honest with ourselves. You ain't conversation you got to have with nobody. And you know your right. And then after a while, you come up out of that. And you say, you know, this is the person I am now. And no matter what type of person I am. Because sometimes a lot of people don't let you change, too. And they try to always hold you to what they think. You know, if you was a thief, you was a thief. But if you're not stealing no more, some motherfuckers will still say, well, I still don't trust. Well, I still don't fuck, fuck with you. Fuck you. So with that being said, you know, you got to force yourself to accept your own change. And that's what hinders people because the world don't let niggas change. They don't let niggas change. It's, uh, I was going to wait to have the election for two and a half. Just a, a, a brief question. Um, as far as dreams, right? Wow. I'm having a lot of dreams lately when I know I'm dreaming. Like, I'm walking, I'll be walking. Me? And I, no. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hold that thought. 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 Okay, here we go. All right. After your question, we are gonna go down and get them chairs, and we are gonna do this work. I just wanted to know, like, I, in the dreams, I know I'm dreaming, and I be like, it, it dawn on me, and I'm like, oh shit, I start fighting myself, like, oh, then I get, you know, I get excited, like I'm dreaming right now. Right. Like, what is that? Sometimes you don't be dreaming, bro. Sometimes you be on another dimension. If that makes sense. No. You ever go to sleep and you have an? I don't even say dream. I say you have another experience, and you wake up with the mark. I ain't had that. Yeah. Shit, I had that. I had that all day. Hell yeah. When I woke up with it, I swear to God, let me tell y'all this some crazy shit. Happened one time. I, never, I ain't never told nobody this shit. I swear on everything I love, on everything I motherfucking love, I was asleep and my soul had came out of my body. And something said, just go under the ground. And I was just like, let me see how far down I can go, bro. And I remember just floating through the ground, bro. That shit might not make no sense, but nigga, I remember going through my bed, floor, the basement. Grass, rock, and I remember it just being dark as hell, and it felt like I was just—if I could make make sense of it—it it felt like somebody just froze me in ice, cause that's how compacted the fucking ground was solid. And I remember just going through the ground. I swear to God, everything I love, bro. I'm not making this shit up. On my dead man mix, I'm not making this shit up. Bro, I came to this big ass cavern. It looked like you know how train stations got the oval. Just picture that shit like times thirty. Big ass oval, and it was mad white people down there, bro. And they had on, swear to God, they had on like military security shit, but it wasn't military. It was some shit I've never seen in my life, but I remember it detailed. They had on black pants, a gray shirt, like some baby blue right, and a silver stitch. And they all was walking down this motherfucker, and I was just floating, and couldn't nobody see me. And I was just like, in my head, I just kept saying, what the fuck is this? This must be an underground base or something. Swear to God on my life, bro. It was this beam, dude. It was like over here to my right. And it, it asked me, it didn't say it verbally, but like, it asked me like, uh, telekinetically, like, basically, what the hell is you doing down here? So I was just like, shit, I don't know. <laughs> like, nigga, I'm here. So he was basically like, you gotta go. So I'm like, hell, I'm not going nowhere. Bro, we started fighting and all that, bro. So I remember it was like a, I don't want to say it was like a reptile being, but the, 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 the vibe I got off it was like a lizard. That was the vibe, but it wasn't in like a physical form. It was like plasma, if that makes sense. It was like a plasmic being. So... It was like it was like uh, plasma, and this actually influenced me to start studying electroplasma. I'm gonna do a video on electroplasma, but it's something called electroplasma, where it's like the first first form of physical reality before you be actually become physical. It's like when the baby's in the womb and they be liquid. It's like your your spirit liquid state okay. called electroplasma. Okay. But outside of that, it was like a plasmic being. So that being said, it had like it like turned his hands or his arms into like praying mantis hands. And I remember in my mind, I just said, make a sword, I swear to God. In my mind, I just said, make a sword. And I just made a sword. So we started fighting, and it was, nigga, it was even Steven. But couldn't nobody see us fighting. This was not a dream. I know it was not a dream. And we was just fighting, 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 fighting. And then we was even Steven, nobody hit nobody. And then at the end, we just stabbed each other. And then after that, the being was like, I don't want to fight no more. I was like, I don't want to fight no more. And I just shot back up through the ground fast as hell. And when I woke up, nigga, my whole side was like, like it was like numb where I got jugged in. But I was like, that wasn't no dream. So it was like you didn't bring the sword? be in another realm. <laughs> it was on the realm, Steph. That's actually Yeah, that's right. I didn't have, but I didn't have mad shit like that. I didn't have mad experience like that where I wake up with bite marks. All kinds of shit. Nigga, my aunt will confirm. Like, oh, here we go. Let's get them chairs. I had to spill something. All right.